quick disclaimer. Everything in this video and all of my videos are my opinion based on detailed research that I perform. That said, I would recommend doing your own research before you make up your mind. Thank you. In the past on this channel, we've talked about how to spot a narcissist, as well as the various stages of a relationship with the narcissist. But today, I want to dive into the details of what it feels like to be in a relationship with a narcissist and the specifics of narcissistic abuse. Before we dive in, I do want to clarify that I am not a psychologist or a psychiatrist. I've just read extensively on this topic since I've experienced narcissistic abuse myself. After I left my last and worst relationship with the narcissist, it felt like waking up from a trance. And I wanted to make sure that I would never let myself fall for that sort of trap ever again. And if this understanding can help others either avoid narcissistic abuse or process their past experiences, then that would just be wonderful. In the past, we've talked about what narcissists are after, adulation, influence, status, but most importantly, control. In order to gain control over people, narcissists first appear to be the most charming, easy to get along with people. They come off as very likable. In the beginning of the relationship between Harry and Meghan, we saw Meghan turning on the charm, playing the perfect part of a woman ready to take on the role of one of the family with Harry. But some of you more observant people saw the small signs that she was lying, especially when her facade slipped. Um, I don't know if it's something new. I think it's, um, you know, it's a... Uh... For me, it's a, an added member of the family. It's, a, it's, a, it's another, another team player as part of the, the bigger team. And, you know, for all of us, all we want to do is be able to... Megan turned on the charm for the rest of the family too, playing along with their expectations. But there were plenty of members of the royal family that she couldn't fool like Prince Philip, Her Majesty the Queen, Princess Anne, and Prince William and Catherine. And of course, there were plenty of instances like the dress fitting for the bridesmaids, the tiara debacle for her wedding, and her treatment of staff that showed her true nature. But by this time, Harry was clearly already hooked on Meghan. And this is a very important piece to note. Relationships with a narcissist can feel like an addiction, and narcissists design it that way. The addiction is very blinding, and pretty soon you find yourself doing whatever is needed to keep the narcissist happy. Hence Harry's comment, what Meghan wants, Meghan gets. Since Harry was so blind to Meghan's true nature and everyone else was so appalled by her behavior, I'm sure to Harry it must have been so shocking that his family didn't love her the way he did. This is where the poisonous words of a narcissist start working overtime. When a narcissist fails to convince someone how absolutely wonderful they are, in this case, Harry's family and friends, the next step is to cut those people out by labeling them as toxic or vicious, or in this case, racist. And to a confused Harry, who is utterly beguiled by Meghan, racism probably sounded like a reasonable answer for why his brother, his father, his grandfather, his aunt, and so many other people were telling him to take it slow with the woman of his dreams. Narcissists have this unbelievable talent of reading people, identifying their fears and insecurities, and then fiddling with their fears to control the person. Like I've mentioned before, Meghan quickly realized that Harry had not properly processed his mother's death and knew that she could press on that sore point to get what she wanted. To control the press, to make sure they're never critical of her, she pushes the narrative that they're hunting her and trying to kill her like they did Princess Diana. In the documentary Harry made with Oprah, The Me You Can't See, Harry talks about this and it was almost comical that even when they're trying to prove that Meghan was being hunted by the press like Diana, it's so blatantly false. Look at these two clips. Diana's experience with the press versus Meghan's is extremely different. It's not even in the same category. In the same documentary, Harry also talks about how Diana was hunted and harassed because she was dating a person of color. But the most shocking thing to come out of the documentary was about the night Harry and Meghan attended an engagement at the Royal Albert Hall. One of the ways that narcissists assert control in relationships is by threatening to leave. To a person in a relationship with a narcissist, someone who is completely hooked, dependent, madly in love, the idea that the narcissist would leave them feels utterly devastating. In this case, Meghan wanted something very specific. She wanted Harry to leave the royal family and to move away from his home country with her and their child. To get this, to get him to leave his world, Meghan told him that she wanted to kill herself and proceeded to tell him exactly how she was planning to do it. Here's Harry describing the situation. Meghan decided to share with me the suicidal thoughts and the, and the practicalities of how she was going to end her life. The thing that stopped her from seeing it through 
was how unfair it would be on me after everything that had happened to my mum and to now be put in a position of losing another woman in my life. Make no mistake, this right here is narcissistic abuse. Megan is using the threat of suicide as a way to remind him that he has plenty to lose if he doesn't fall in line with her demands. It's a very cruel card to play since I'm sure it triggered all sorts of fear and trauma for Harry. And I'm sure this isn't the only time that Meghan has used similar threats to exert control over him. I completely agree with Candace Owens here, who said in a tweet, I cannot say enough that Prince Harry is in an emotionally abusive relationship. Meghan has groomed him to believe that she is his mother reincarnate. Only this time, he has the chance to save her. This is an incredibly sad situation. And during the documentary, we we can see just how unraveled Harry really is. Everything has changed about him. He thinks the press is racist, he says his family was never there for him when he was mourning his mother, and that he didn't go to therapy until Meghan pushed him to do it, four years ago. He also says that he's never really enjoyed being a working royal, and that he felt like he was treated poorly by his family, sent wherever the rest didn't want to go because he was a yes man. And finally, he says that flying into London, the city that's been his home all his life, has always been triggering. But there are so many inconsistencies here. It was reported that he had said that he'd gotten into therapy seven years ago and that it was his brother who had pushed him into doing it. During a conversation between him, William, and Catherine for their mental health charity Heads Together, he said that William pushed him to talk more about their mother's death. I always thought to myself, you know, what's the point in bringing up the past? What's the point in bringing up something that's only going to make you sad? It ain't going to change it. It ain't going to bring her back. And when you start thinking like that, it can be really damaging. And you always said to me, you said, you know, you've got to sit down and think about those memories. But for me, it was like, don't want to think about it. Yeah. He also said that his father helped him cope after Diana died. As far as his work, he always seemed to enjoy himself, and photographers that traveled with Prince Harry always said that he had a great relationship with the press and always seemed to be the most engaged. This is yet another consequence of a relationship with a narcissist, and that is the rewriting of history. Harry himself has admitted that he did not feel trapped in his life until Meghan helped him see it that way. As part of exerting control in a narcissistic relationship, a narcissist will convince the person that you need them, that they've rescued you you from your misery, that you are under their care and they will protect you. It's a strange dynamic where to the narcissist, you are their property. You are not an independent person with the will of your own. No, you belong to them and you need to listen to them because they know better and have your best interests in mind. It's this manipulation that has changed Harry from an independent man to Meghan's lieutenant. He is her foot soldier, seeing the world as she's defined it for him and looking at his his family, friends, and his past as she's described it to him. So if it feels like we don't recognize Prince Harry at all, it's because he is 100% under the control of a narcissist. The thing is that Harry was someone who invited all of this in. It's very clear that Harry has not been in a healthy mental place since his mother died. He's been lost. That is until Meghan found him and he feels like Meghan is saving him. When in fact, Meghan is using him, controlling him for her own means. And this was certainly my experience of narcissists. After coming out of the relationship I mentioned before, I realized that this man had used my insecurities to first create safety for me and then use it to control and manipulate me. After understanding that one point, my trajectory changed forever. And I hope it helps other people understand narcissistic abuse and control too. Well, what do you think? Did you watch the Me You Can't See documentary? And what did you think about the details Harry shared about his relationship with Meghan and with his family? In a separate video, I want to look deeper into Harry's experience of his mother's death and how and why it has contrasted heavily with the way Prince William has handled his grief. If you would be interested in that video, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please share, like, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Also, a big thank you to all of my patrons. Thank you for your ongoing support. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.